Welcome to the prestigious Radisson President Hotel, right opposite the site of where the Grand Prix track is going to be in Melbourne in 12 short months. Tonight we're here to present the wrap-up for the 1994 professional kickboxing season. To top off tonight's card, a championship event. The challenger will be Gurkhan Ozkan trying to retain his crown. He lost on August 26th to Mark May. The fight is going to be an absolute classic. We have a capacity crowd, in fact, overflowing here tonight to witness the event. So please settle back and enjoy this top kickboxing action. Up at the moment by uh, Mark Corey, the referee in this first event. The first of a big card here tonight at the Radisson President. The Turkish Revenge, they call, they're calling the event. And it gives me great pleasure to introduce to the microphone, Stan Longanese. Welcome back, Stan. Ian, it's always a pleasure to work with you, and I'm really excited about tonight here at the Radisson. Tarek Solak has put round together one. an excellent card. I was just uh, listening to Howard Lee called uh, round number one. Two exciting young men and an aggressive night. Very aggressive here. Oh, toe-to-toe toe, toe here. They're both fighting. Terry Lenny, a left hook. Nice round kick. Great. The referee breaks him. How do we pronounce that name? Yufat Ilhan? Oh, right hand by Ilhan. Ilhan in the red shorts. Terry in the green shorts. Both boys very confident. And swapping it like there's no tomorrow. Mark Corey working overtime watching these two young athletes. Really great crowd here tonight at the Radisson President to see this card. Final bout for 1994. Great atmosphere here at the Radisson. Good spinning round kick. Uh, kick. The next kick there by Ilhan. Two punches at land. The next kick again. Referee saying, stop rolling up the ropes there. Your hands being warm. Front kick by Ilhan. Jab. This is with the right hand. Left hook at land. Cherry comes right back with a good left hook and a right hand. And the left again. Ilhan's in trouble. Ilhan's in trouble. Uppercut left hook again, right hand. Oh, a lot of heart, a lot of heart to come back from this. Bill Hand now hanging on those, that breath, that, that fresh air, that's what he's looking for right now to clear that air. Absolutely, he's in a bit of trouble, a low kick there, and actually just misses the mark. Terry, being aggressive and more tonight. Good left hook and right, oh, good combinations with the hands. The left hook again, New Hansi travels. The referee looks very closely here. New Hansi trying to hold on. Smart there by Ilhan, really. You, you need to do it, Stan, at that stage, Serge. I think, Ian, fighters of this calibre, you've got to appreciate their inexperience. When they've got someone hurt, they don't know how to stay composed as we end the round. Oh, yes. Well. As I was saying, Ian, a couple of times there, Terry Tynan had Ilhan in a lot of trouble, but because they lack experience, they're only beginners, they're amateurs, and I think they've had many fights. They've actually had one or two fights between them. So... They lack the experience and they don't stay composed. And as you can see, they don't give themselves much room yeah, and they're trying to throw punches the kicks. Both boys look very fit. Extremely fit, actually. I'm surprised the guys are having their first and second fight in pretty good shape. As we go into the corner there with Ilhan, you can hear his mentor, uh, his mentor, Jamal Hassan, struck him. Whereas in the blue corner, former Australian champion, Tanz Casio, giving instructions for Terry. What, what would you be giving him, the, him instructions at the moment? He, he was at, getting the upper hand. At this point, if I was uh, the trainer of Terry Tynes, I would be telling him, listen, Terry, you're winning the fight, you're scoring the much cleaner blows, but don't get messy. Be clean. At this point in their career, that's what the judges want to see. Clean fighting. If they, if, once they get someone hurt and they don't give themselves much room, that's when they start sort of grappling and holding on. Good words from Stan Longanini. So I go into round number two. Once again, Tynan the aggressor, back into that referee's corner again. Oh, Ilhan dropping his hands. I'd like to see him keep his hands up. He's always throwing that axe kick. A left hook drops. Oh, Terry's got him in trouble. Look, there's no defense there at all at the moment by Ilhan. As you can see, he's trying to hold on. The problem with Ilhan is he's leaning on the ropes and he's trying to throw kicks when there's no room. So really, it, it, it's wasted energy. Should he be trying to box out of Absolutely, the... right there, as you can yes, see. Yes, just way to the left. That's right, Terry's in a spot of bother right there. There's no defense from Ilhan. I like to see Ilhan keep his hands up. Nice front kicks, low kicks. But look at his defense. Very vulnerable to those punches. 
Referee again, Mark Corey. Separating the boxes. Contemplating a round. Oh, nice round to the lance to the head. No count. Straight back into it. Mark Corey, the referee of this uh, event. Yes, Mark Corey, watching very closely here. Both guys uh, a little fatigued at this point, I think, Ian. Well, they've thrown a lot into it. And Stan, this is, uh, I suppose, the exuberance with youth, isn't it? Absolutely. I mean, he's got good round kick that was locked there, but these guys are you know, having their first second fight. I mean, they've got more experience when they go along. The full at this point, you know? Terry dropping his guard as well. Both guys really no defense at this point. Oh, little hand. Getting on top here. Jamal screaming and struck down at the bell. Holtz. Good point at the end of another round. Well, I'd hate to be scoring this one, I've got to tell you, because it's, uh, it's, it's been a little bit of print pro quo, I think. Something's going on. Very difficult fight. Very difficult fight. I would say, and I'm shocked. Go, go. This is the time to touch here in the corner. Listen, are you going to do it with the dignity or are you going to do it like a lady? You're going to give one head kick. Do you understand? We're listening to the Marvin Tarrant. Well, we've actually got a picture of Tony DiCasio. I overheard Tony DiCasio telling Terry, it's the last round, you've got Don't to go out here and be aggressive left, right, left, right. This is the fight. This is what it's all about. When you're tired, that's when you've got to put in, Ian. That those pair of eyes that observe for you kick. so well, they this must one be able to break you. One thing, at such move a time. around and kick you. Pick up those points okay. to help you. You look like Absolutely. a bloody shit. Oh, wake, wake up, wake up. Can I win this fight or what? Yes or no? Yes or no? Yes or no? Seconds up. You cannot follow this. Third and final round. The third and final round, Ian. This will be tough. I tell you what, I think this round is probably the one that's going to indicate who's going to be the winner. Fair call, you think, Ian? I think so. I'll take that one, Stan. <laughs> Terry Tyne and then the green trunks. And uh, you've got Ilhan in the red trunks. I think it's fair to say that Ilhan has been more effective with the kicking. Yes. And oh, good left hook there by Terry. Terry Tyne. Oh, almost, <laughs> almost throws a judo throw there. Yes, it was over the, the hip. <laughs> almost a standard hip throw, but uh, of course... I guess at that stage it's frustration takes over to that point, isn't it? I've got him, I've got to toss him down. Of course, that's what it's all about. But then again, it's good tactics because the guy's got to pick him up, pick himself up from the canvas to take a lot of energy out of him. Nice front kick by Ilhan. Round kick block. Slipping See? again and uh, that, nothing else. Just simply a but slip. But even that, when you're tired at this point, pick yourself up from the canvas, takes a lot out of you. Man. Nice jab by Ilhan, which lands. Another jab that lands. He's too close to be throwing the axe kick, but he's still attempting it at your hand. Neutral corner right above our commentary point. Both boxers aware this is it. It's up for grabs. Very, very hard to score. I wouldn't even like to give it maybe, uh, maybe a point in it at the moment. There's not much in it at this point. There's not much in it. Mark Corey has certainly uh, earned his keep in this first match for these... Uh, Two young boxers. Oh, right hand to Will Hand there, left hand to uh, to Tynan. Oh, one Oh, excuse me. He loads up the left hook again to the rib. Both guys very tired. Very, very tired. I think they'll be both glad to hear that final bell ring. Right Showing discipline, though, and I think that's important. Uh, obviously, uh, Ill Hand is in there uh, trying to follow those instructions of Jamal Hassan. Nice left hook there, landed by oh. Terry, loading up with that left hand, leaning on top of your hand there, which is a good, it's a, it's a smart move there by Terry, when you lean all over your opponent. Now there's the belt. There's the belt. Ladies and gentlemen, a very close fight by split points from the blue corner, Terry Tainer. Both by fighters. Genevieve Cafe Restaurant. We had a lovely dinner there last night in Carlton. Round one. Mark Corey again, the third man in the ring. And uh, worked overtime. Let's have a look at these guys. Oh, Pat goes straight for him. Nice front kick. Low kick by Pat. Round kick. Oh, inside leg kick by Pat Christoffi. Big ranging guys. Yeah, great physique on Pat Christoffi. 
You see the right hand there? Get, ooh, get the jab. Alua moving around, very confident. A touch of arrogance, really, in the way Alua's moving around. Very confident, nice round kick, misses the mark. Pat very composed at this point. Two different builds, really, when you look at them, aren't they? Well, of course. I mean, uh, as you can see, Pat in the black trunks with the red piping, in very, very good shape. Nice low kick there by Alua. Excellent condition, Pat Kustofi. But looks mean nothing, Ian, as we all know. Axe kick attempt there by Alua. After, Very, after that opening uh, flurry, they're both uh, standing back and taking a bit of stock now, I think. I definitely agree with you. I think it's uh, going to maybe take a round or two to see these guys. Oh, good right hand. Very evasive there. Pat Christoffi, Alua misses with those punches. It's impressed tonight watching the uh, pre-match medical inspections are so thorough. They are so careful in this sport. And so they should be, and it's potentially a dangerous sport. We have to acknowledge that. So we have to be very careful, and we have got, we couldn't get a better man to do the job, Dr. Peter Lewis. I think the, the guys started off in the first 20 seconds jumping out on top of each other, but at this point, I think they might take a round or two to establish the tempo of the fight. I don't think Pat's doing enough at this point to score. That's the only problem. No one really is, but you've got to be aggressive. Bit stand back, isn't it? There's uh, been patches yes. of it, but we'll watch what happens now. Neutral corner. Pat shouldn't wait. See, Pat just following him around. Shouldn't be waiting for him. Interesting to hear the uh, respective instructions by the trainers. Now, when you move around, you can't fight. You understand that now? You understand? Now, move around. As we are in Pat's corner, and we just need to the Jamal Hassan's corner. Hit the right hand and get away. Okay? Win, win the round, don't worry about the race. See? Don't fall in Very simple okay? instructions there by Jamal Hassan. Win the round, that's all I want to do. This guy's not doing enough work to outpoint you, so just move around, keep doing what you're doing. So I'll be happy too if I was Jamal at this point. Jay, the trainer of that. Uh, Pat to stop him here. Really should be telling Pat, Pat, you've got to be aggressive. You've got to jump on him. You've got to throw things. If you're going to score, it's not really. Right on his jaw. Right on his jaw. Both people sent back to their corners. Pat! 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 It's so lit. Corey walks in very quickly to talk to Alouche. Pat goes straight for him. Pat, oh, Pat's all over him. Oh, he's hurt. Alouche, everybody comes right back. Oh, ton of heart. Ton of heart. Trying to clear that head. Trying to side him up. Christophe sends his victory, but Alouche comes right back at him. Pat's got to keep his hands up. Front kick. Oh, overhand right. Just misses the mark. Whoa. What a recovery, Alua. Pat now sensing victory, Pat. His confidence. Front kick jab. Ooh, short right hand. Pat is dumbing. Ooh, gets hit with a jab. So keep his hands up here, Pat. Look at the eyes. Very Concentrating. Focused. Very focused. First fight. His debut tonight. Doing a pretty good job at this point, both fighters. Timing out there for him. This has certainly changed the tempo of the fight from what we've seen in the earlier round. Pat Christophe should be all over him. You shouldn't give him all this, all this room. Lewis had the opportunity to get out of jail, so to speak, and back into this action. Nice oh, another one then. Hit the mark. Back on the ropes. Mark Corey in quickly. At this point, Pat looks almost content with that knockdown. He's happy to win this round with a knockdown, so... It's probably going to be a 10-8 now, round. So it's a good two-point advantage for that knockdown? Well, as long as he maintains the round. If he keeps getting hit or something, it's going to change it. Yeah. If he can stay on top of things, I, I would call it a 10-8 round. And that's oh, the oh, end of oh, that oh. round. And, whoa. The official by here.
Both corners busy listening to Jaman Hassan. We had to, we had a fight all, just about all over. Stopping was stop there him, and command of it. And at the moment, Hit we're the listening shots. to uh, Hit the shots. the Lewis out. trainer, Jamal Hassan. He's getting him back into this fight. He's psyching this guy up. But the way that guy is going to win it, I believe, is on push. That's going to be the case. The other guy is definitely the heavy hitter. Well, Pat Christophe trying to land the big shot and put him out. You're absolutely right. But at this Look point... Smart. You understand? You understand? You understand? You understand? You understand? Look smart! This is a very important round. So there may be only one point in it. Well, there's definitely, there's definitely one round each, but the chances are that the second round was won by 10-8 by Pat Christophe. Very okay. important round. Okay. Interesting third comments round. from Stan Longanides. As we see him come out for the third round. Touch of gloves. Again, Christophe, the aggressor. Oh, but there you go. The ties have changed in this world of kickboxing. The next kick there. Nice low kick by Pat. Good check. And counter by Pat Christophe. Aluam. Oh, good right hand. But he wears it well. Pat lining up. He's really lining up that right hand, isn't he? Pat Christophe and Abdad Alur. Pat's got to keep his hands up. Both fighters got to keep their hands up here. A left Blue, hook. Blue Corners had one victory so far tonight. Will it be two? Christophe coming out of the blue corner. Alur coming out of the red. Pat Both these fighters now. He needs to be getting into it now. I'd imagine it keeps us alive. Pat throws a left and a right, but misses the market. Pat Christophe in absolute phenomenal shape, really. Jamal Hassan screaming orders out here at the moment. Nice left hook of Alua that scrapes uh, Pat on the cheek. Left hook again. Oh, right hand. A lot of vocal support there by the Turkish community for Alua. Oh, turning the tables as it is. Pat looks a little tired at this point. Pat Christophe, got to finish strong. He's going to have to finish strong, both fighters. Left and right misses, but Alua. Pat's in the corner, trying to hold on. Yeah, clubbing, clubbing punches there as the referee, Mark Corey, again in the red corner going across and separating. Pat, breathing heavily. Left hook. Alua in the white trunks, Christophe in the, the black trunks. The slip by both of them. And at ringside, the queen of international kickboxing, five times world champion, star of the action movie, The Stranger, and now co-starring with Richard Norton, who's at ringside in the Under the Sun, the best female kickboxer in the world from California, United States of America. Would you welcome Catavorting, cultivating Kathy Long. Come on, guys, give this lovely lady and ladies, give this Kathy Long. <laughs> Welcome to Australia, Kathy. Hi, Richard. Tell us about this incredible lady. Well, as you uh, just said, how five-time world champion, and now. Um, into movies, starring their own movies. Okay. What? Oh. <laughs> there's some people out here. Anyway, Kathy's out here to um, co-star in a movie titled Under the Gun. So um, we're as happy as pie to have her out here. But maybe Kathy wants to say a few words. Um, it's the first time I've been to Australia, and I have to say I'm, I'm really happy to be here, and I love you all. Thanks. Okay. Thanks, Howard. Kathy, don't go away that quickly. Tell us about kickboxing in the United States. You've seen Australian kickboxing tonight. Is the atmosphere the same in America? Uh, the atmosphere, I think, is a little calmer sometimes. But uh, there's been a few riots, but the crowd is pretty much the same. Could we ever see you fight in Australia? No, I'm sorry. I've retired. Any... Uh... <laughs> well, this is a chauvinist question. How old are you? How old do I look? 21. That's how old I am. <laughs> no comebacks. No, I'm sorry. 
Okay, Kathy Long and Richard Norton. Come on, give our American actress five times world champion. Thank you, Stan. Metro Travel and the Melbourne Billiard Company. Yeah, better. We welcome Mr. Con Brasalis to ringside, promoter, and also Silvio Morelli, managing director of Blitz Publications. There's a Round the white trunks out of the red corner. The black trunks are those of uh, Pascalides out of the blue corner. A winner corner so far. This is the third event here tonight at the Radisson President. Have a look at this, Dan. Oh, good left hook landed there by, by Pascalides. Castellides comes out from the corner, very aggressive and tenacious. He really wants to win this fight, Ian. Very important fight. Low kick. Two low kicks. Very focused there, Castellides. High kick by Barris. Once again, great physical shape. A jab by Barris. Nice front kick. Puts uh, Castellides off balance a little. They're very strong. Oh, yeah. These guys look very deceiving sometimes. Yeah. Referee calls break. Nice kick with the body inside oh, licking by Pascalini. Oh, good left hook and body. Nice little combination there by Pascalini. So the left rip to the body and a hook. Very quick, very agile. Two fine athletes. Nice side kick by Barris. These events under the auspices of the International Sport Karate Association. Tony Wingside, the president, Dr. Peter Lewis, also the chief medico, the guy who cares for these men. Absolutely. Very well put there, Ian. Always keeping a close eye on the fighters. Well, no clear punches or kicks landed there. Oh, good left hook by Pascalides. But Barris seems to wear it okay. Keep him busy here in the neutral corner, right in front of us. Working very, very hard. There's no give up. Oh, yes. Yes, nice left hook there by Barris. Inside leg kicks there by Pascalides. And you can already see the bruises on the inside of the legs of Barris Nezzard. It'll be very, two very colourful corners, I dare say, at this break. Metro <laughs> Travel. <laughs> And the Melbourne Billet Company are our sponsors for third bout on the We're in the corner with Mr. Dana Goodson, uh, yours truly, of course, my trainer as well. Hammond. Dana Goodson, a very Jan professional Chi trainer, and always gets his boys 100%. And uh, it's Taylor. evident looking at Just the physique when of the into you, We're in the corner with Jamal Hassan at the moment. You, you can't see why they got one arm, please. Okay, Barish, you're doing very good. You're Jamal doing Hassan almost begging uh, Barris. To, to listen to his instructions because if he doesn't follow instructions very closely, he could find himself out of this fight. What would Dana be saying to him now? What would you be instructing him? I think after that first round, Dana should be extremely happy. All I want to see at this point, me personally, I'd like to see Pascalini stay a little bit more composed. Pick your shots and stay composed. Fighters of this caliber seem to get tired very quickly because they get excited, the adrenaline's pumping, they throw more than they should. Come on, brother! What is it, Nick? The idea is to make a miss and make them pay. It's all about time, yeah. Absolutely, as we hit the second round here. Yeah. There's a white trunks, Pascalides black trunks. There's a take the fight up to Pascalides. Two of them on the ropes over towards the neutral corner. Mark Corey, the referee. As you can see, uh, both fighters are a little more composed at this point. Picking in the shots, three round kicks in a row by Pascalides. A bit of a slip there, so there's no knockdown at that point. So both, both corners very vocal, Dana and uh, also Jamal. Two very experienced uh, cornermen actually, now that you mentioned it in. So both fighters have uh, good credibility in their corner as far as following instructions. Uh, Pascalides actually attempted a, a low kick to the back leg and didn't follow through and he fell, fell to the canvas. Playing chess here, both fighters, very, very careful. See who makes the mistake and who will pay the price for it. Nice low kick. Oh, good high kick by Pascalides, which landed on the head. Uppercut attempt there by Barris. There's no claiming in this. It's still the referee breaks it. They still keep going. It's the referee's job. Look 
that concentration. Nice check by Barrett. Open the blue corner now. Well, Pascaliti was very evasive there, but his hands were low, so he's relying on his evasiveness there to move away from those punches as he looks to Dana Goodson to follow instructions. Nice jab, but he cops a low kick. It's an extremely hard fight to uh, extremely hard fight to score at the moment. Yes. Credit being to both of them. And the bell. So again, there's going to be some colour in the corners. Uh, two different styles uh, in some respects of, uh, of coaching. But uh, nonetheless, two very experienced men. Those second pair of eyes. We'll go back with Jamal Desai. Actually, we're in the blue corner with... Uh, Pascalides and Dana Goodson. Super lightweight championship fights. Dana Goodson. Josh, we can't get the audio out of there at the moment. I'd like to hear what Dana's actually saying. I can saying. read Dana's lips, actually. I've been with him. <laughs> I can read Dana's lips. He's my trainer. What would he be saying? And I'm sure, actually, at this point, I think Ian is probably telling him. He got his hands up, hit the ribs on the four round. You should be so careful on the four round. How did you feel? Yeah, I'm feeling it. Hang on. You're going to kick that left kicking then. So you don't block on it. And I step on his foot. You understand that? He's got pain. You're going to understand the fight with the pain. Well, Jamal is on, encouraging his fighter. This is the third round, and he's really got to pick up the pace here. I would say that Dana Goodson, at this point, is probably extremely happy. This fight has been creative. He's mixing it up high and low. So it's Last cruising point. at this point. Spin kick attempt there by Barris. This is the mark. And it doesn't matter how capable you are with that knockout punch. You've got to keep scoring those points. Oh, good left oh. combo! Lockdown. The referee's calling it a knockdown. I'm not sure if that was a knockdown, though. I've got to admit, I'm confused a little by it. I'm not sure if that was called a knockdown, but geez, both, both fighters trading blows and landing some big shots between them. Nice left hook again by uh, Pascalides, but Barris stand back with a short right of his own. He was getting a bit scruffy and close there. Left hook, oh, a lunging left hook there. Nice body, oh, good combination by Pascalides. But Barris comes right back, showing a lot of courage. Pascalides just not happy about that uh, referee's call before. He feels that he has to work hard to win his round back now. Slight bleeding from the nose by Pascalides. Probably the last thing on his mind at the moment. Instructions being screened from the corners. Referee breaking him out of the neutral corner. Box on. Oh, this is absolutely desperate stuff. And so, again, I've broken up in the blue corner. Is it taking the, uh, the fight right up there? No, Pascalides lands the left. Kicking combinations. Time running out of this fight. Round three. Round well, three. Into the third round. Ooh, have a look at the. Have a look at this. Both trainers quick into the ring. Fight them. Here we are in the blue corner with Pascalides and uh, spot of bother there really. Bleeding from the nose. A couple of puffed eyes. I think really from training actually. He walked into the ring tonight with a couple of bruises. Yeah, I did notice when he walked through the door that uh, that was the case. Well, once again, that's just evidence of the hard work and preparation. Left leg, left hand. Okay, when hitting this, he was copying it. So Try more, more, more. I challenge you the right hand. I'm a solo. I'm gonna be a hard cup of apple. You know, his hands are too tight. Do not get mad at him, mate. You've got two minutes to go to win this fight. In this one of the best fighters, he's winning in like right two minutes. Be aggressive. You can't wait. Do you understand that? Please win this fight for us. You try every technique you got. Head kicks. Head kicks. So head kicks. So this could be very, very colourful. Fourth and final round. I think it's a very important round. Mark Corey fights the two fighters up. They touch gloves. This is the final round of what's been an absolutely fantastic event here tonight at the Radisson President. 
Cascalini is very aggressive, always shoe shining there, body body uppercuts hooks. I think it's a good performance by uh, Pascalini. He's, he's been out of the ring for two years. Nice jab. Oh, good combination. Jab right cross. But Faris comes right back. It's one thing about these Turkish fighters. They, what they might lack in skill, they're definitely having tenacity and courage. Yeah? That's where it's actually winning him events, isn't it? It's, 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 it's mouth guard there. The referee uh, coming to that attention. And the procedure when that happens. Uh, well, the referee stops it. Uh, the referee gives the mouthpiece to the trainer and the Washington is the the Once again, toe to toe. Barris wants a big round here. Short punches for both fighters. Pascalini's now the aggressor. And they're in the blue corner. Pascalini's corner in this case. Oh, how to toe. big are their hearts? To good pace. The whole fight was a pretty good pace. Here. I tell you what, both these, uh, both these young men deserve a great round of applause for their efforts, regardless of the winner. It's a big effort. Garris moving around the ring. Trying to make the most of the ring. Oh, good left hook by Pascalini. Oh! Pascalini's landing the biggest shots. Barris trying to make Oh, good right hand by Barris. Points being scored. Oh, right hand by Barris. Pascalini. He wears a good shot, but he's right there. Barris moves around. Bit of a shuffle there. Lane in the corner. Listening to his uh, trainer, Jim up. Good low kick. Andy chasing him. Uh, Pascalini, sorry. Every Pascalini's chasing him. Frank kick. And Mark Corey again working overtime in the ring. And the bell. Come on, a big round of applause, sir. Oh, yes. Nice really? Ladies and gentlemen, by split points, the new Iska Victorian Super Lightweight Champion, Evan Pitbull Pascali. Always a focus at this point, and we'll see how they take off. Five rounds of boxing, and uh, Peter Clark, the referee, very round capable. One. And round number one, Joe Nader in the black trunks. Ooh, wild left hook there by and Gary. Gary Dimitrakis in the, the blue. Nice low kick by Joe Nader. Redirects it. Oh, good low kick again. Oh, good left hook. He was hurt then, but he seems to be wearing it well. Big left hook there by Joe Nader. Nader just looking over to Dana Goodson. That's right. Acknowledging. Joe acknowledging. That's a good a sign of a good fighter when he looks at his corner while he's in neutral corner. Low kick again. Joe Nader wants to finish this one early. He sent his victory, Joe Nader. Good body kick. Well placed. 
flicking the jab out, keeping busy. Nice low kick. Oh, Gary's got to start checking those low kicks. Nice low kick again. Dummy in with the punches and coming down low with the kicks. Later. Frank kick by Gary. Gary Dimitrakis already showing uh, a lot of redness in that left leg. Mm. Uppercut, left hook again. Ooh. Gary's got to keep his right hand up. I'd like to see, I'd like to see Joe Nader maintain this uh, tenacity right now. He shouldn't back off at all. Nice right hand. He should chase him, he shouldn't wait. He's waiting. Nice uh, movement there, head movement by Joe Nader. Joe Nader there wondering why he's bleeding when he's hitting him. Toe to toe here, both fighters in the blue corner. Joe were uh, bleeding profusely from that nose. Oh, good right hand again. Toe to toe again. Both fellas. Oh. And Nader wins that encounter. Low kick there by Gary, which lands. Joe Nader's got to keep moving forward. He's got to press him. Nice low kick. Check by Gary. Thank you. Joe Nader's got to stop waiting. Nice left hook. Oh, good round. Excellent round. A bit of aggression there for both of them and Dana Gibson will be up there of course to uh, check that nose and I dare say that uh, Dr Peter Lewis will be watching closely from afar as the saying goes. What a colour coming out of the corner I think at the moment we'll leave that one. <laughs> and uh, as we see uh, Dana Goodson just in there yeah. and uh, interesting to say the discipline of Joe Nader when the knockdown occurred before and uh, I, I watched him carefully go back into the neutral corner straight away his eyes picked on Dana Goodson and as your comment was at the time uh, you know Good discipline, Look, discipline. You're, right. you're in the neutral corner you're safe let's make this man let's go come on let's get you for five you well Round number two coming up. Scheduled for five rounds. Gary Dimitrakis in the red corner. Smoking Joe Nader in the blue corner. Wearing the black trunks and the white piping. He was bleeding profusely. In fact, it's uh, starting to trickle down his nose right now. As the bell sounds for round two. Frank kick by Gary. Wild right hook but doesn't find the mark. Joe Nader. Very focused. Look at the eyes. Smile there. Bit of arrogance there. Bit of talking there by smoking Joe Nader. Frank kick by by Nader. Ooh, Joe Nader bleeding profusely from the nose once again. Gary throws a right roundhouse kick. And a bit of a slip there. And uh, referee Peter Clark accepting it as that. Just drying off the gloves. Good call by Peter Clark as they continue round two. Nice body shot there by Smoking Joe. Jab. Double jab right hand there by Gary Dimitrakis. Got to follow through with kicks there, Joe Nader. He's throwing punches. He should follow through with the kicks. Gary There's a kick. Gary taking the fight up to him now. He was uh, looking like the uh, aggressed, if you like, in the first event, in the first round, but uh, is the aggressor now. Well, he probably figures if he can weather the storm in that first round, he's probably got a chance to win this fight. Absolutely. Good right hook there after the break. Peter Clark not happy about that. The referee. Gary Dimitrakis in the uh, blue trunks, we can call it, I hope with the gold piping, smoking Joe Nader in the black trunks with the white piping. Low kick by Nader. Left hook. And it's probably fair to say that Joe uh, uh, probably looks a lot more, uh, how can I say, awry at the moment than he actually is. That would be uh, a little off-putting to him, but uh, certainly... Well, I thought he won the round, the first round very comfortably, and uh, <laughs> by the looks of it, he think he was losing the vote. Oh, go, right go, go! Left hook right in! Left hook right in! And Dimitrakis hits the canvas! Peter Clark giving him the count. Smoking Joe Nader has a look at Dana Goods and his trainer. And the safe bell by the bell. Dimitrakis. Oh, Joe Nader a little disappointed there to hear the bell. We'll try and keep our eye on uh, Nader's corner over the blue corner for this one with uh, Dana Goodson. And uh, interesting again, you can see the action going on. Well, what's this here, Dana? 
Very calculating, knows how very to settle complaint. his man down. If you notice, no screaming like other corners you might have noticed. Very calm, very... Low. We have an audio problem in the blue corner, but uh, as you can see, Vaseline being put on the... Uh, the and Dana's not one to waste words. Dana Goodson gives you one or two instructions, and very clear. He'll ask you during that uh, intermission. What do you got to do? You better give the right answer. Round three or five. Oh, very keen to get on with it. Oh, big bolo there by uh, Joe Nader. Six the jab out. Left front kick. Nader has scored uh, two knockdowns so far in this event. Actually, I'm overwhelmed with Gary at this point because uh, he's, he's come out pretty fresh oh, in the third round. He, he's, every time he's come back. Oh, good right hand. But Joe Nader comes right back. He weaves. He, he comes back with a left hook. He's throwing that overhand right, body. Oh, right hand by Landing him. Landing him. Mikey Joe, right hand, left hook. He's looking for that open. Oh. Some action here. Good roll. Joe Nader doing as he likes at this point. Although bleeding profusely from the nose. Sticking that jab. Staying busy, Joe Nader. We should be saying that he's been uh, bleeding from the first round. The referee, Peter Clark, watching closely here. Into the neutral corner. Still trading. Oh! Oh! Right on the point of the chin. Peter Clark jumps in. Is he going to his count? Is the count? Now, just have a look under the right eye. Under Gary's right eye. Is that some blood from the club or is it in fact a split appearing there? Joe Nader walks straight Box to on. him. He takes the low kick. Overhand right. Left hook. Oh! And Gary's in trouble. He's staying on his feet. Joe Nader oh, loading up. What a heart this guy's got. Joe Nader, smoking Joe, wants to land the big one. Tremendous courage there by Peter. Sorry, Gary. Gary. Gary Dimitrakis. Gary Dimitrakis in... showing an enormous courage. Dimitrakis in the uh, blue Nader. trunks. Nader in the, in the black. Oh, 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 big right hand. That's it. It's all over. The referee stops it. Big right hand. Coming up. And, uh, of course, Machine Gun Charlie... Uh, Bit of a fan favourite. Well, I think so. A little uh, sentimental value there, really. I mean, Norman Larden has uh, had four fights, three wins, so definitely experience going to Machine Gun Charlie's uh, side. We call him Machine Gun Charlie in those old days, so I think I'll maintain that same name. Absolutely. Machine Gun Charlie in the all white trunks with Norman Larden in the white with red piping. First of five rounds. Nice low kick there by Machine Gun. Spinning kick there by Machine Gun. Almost copybook. Nice low kick there with the shin. Norman comes back with a low kick. Double left hook by Machine Gun. Look at the eyes. Look at the focus on Machine Gun. Oh, good right hand over the top. Lands, but Norman seems okay. He comes back with the right hand of his own. Nice spinning kick by Machine Gun. Quite a bag full of tricks out, Charlie. Very creative, Machine Gun. He's very creative. He knows how to mix it up. Look at his defense. Look at, his, look at that guard. Look at the focus in his eyes. He's, he's very focused for this fight. Very important for him. Long jab there. Doesn't find the round kick there by Norman. Front kick. Nice left rip to the body and up to the head by Machine Gun. Nice low kick. Ooh, nice little combination oh. there. Experience something that can never be bought in the ring. That's right. Machine Gun's been there. Ooh, nice left rip. And I tell you what, I bet you Norman, Norman felt that. Norman Larden receiving a good body blow there. Very composed. That's what I was telling you. He looks at the composure on Machine Gun. He picks his shots. Every his... opportunity and never misses. That's right. He's composed. When he wants to unleash, he unloads with the combination. And then he stays composed again. That low kick again. Oh, nice. Almost that almost uppercut hook there by Machine Gun Charlie to end the round. And just casually walks back to his corner. Isn't that amazing? Are you that composed? I don't know. I don't know. I don't think so. <laughs>
Traction. We're in the blue corner there. Dr. Peter Lewis is having a close look at Norman Larden there. A little concerned, uh, Dr. Peter Lewis. Yeah, this is interesting, isn't it? Well, he received that last blow right right at the end there before the bell uh, sounded. It was like an uppercut left hook sort of punch. Sir Peter's uh, uh, very concerned look on uh, Dr. Peter. The Lewis. fight's off. I think he took it in the eye. What transpired there? And what has happened here, ladies and gentlemen, is that the uh, that uh, there is an injury cut. or something, and a small, uh, a small cut. And Under this right this way. is this is again a reinforcement Lord of the care. Here's Dr. Peter Lewis. Lower As a result of this, he can't see, so we've had to stop the fight. Very unfortunate. There's no way we can fix it. They can't fight with only one eye. Sorry. We have Nick Talakouris here, a very experienced uh, fighter. And John Wimber, we saw him uh, in Melbourne against uh, Del Ilhan. Five rounds, where there was a bit of a mishap. Um, there was a bit of a clash of uh, rules there, where the Muay the the Thai clash with the kickboxing rules, which is uh, the, the, the Thai rules, including the elbows and the knees. And uh, that fight had to be stopped, so it'll be interesting to see the outcome of, Sponsorship. The outcome of this one. Sponsorship. Yes, uh, a good memory there, because uh, it was Sterling a very emotional security. moment. When Round that one. Happened. So we've got a number of number of rounds. One man on the comeback trail, and the other man on the, on the comeback to Australia trail, if you like. So two totally different things happening here. Why burn in the dark trunks? The purple trunks, of course, that of Tully Kuras coming back after two years. It's a long time to bet. Yeah, it is a long time. Uh, it all boils down to the fitness. How long he's been back into training? Um, I think he he did have a knee operation as well in that uh, period of absence. And it'll be interesting to see how he shapes up tonight. It's certainly uh, heavy bandaging on the uh, on the right knee of Tully Kouris. And, uh, oh, very heavy flash. Yeah. Both goals really going at it at the moment. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see whether that uh, right knee will uh, be a determining factor in this fight. Peter Clark back in as the third man in the ring. I think it's just punch the punch at the moment. They still seem to be sizing each other up to a degree, although they're getting uh, more aggressive now. A few heavy ones coming in through there. Word to both fighters about holding. Kalikuras here, uh, only brought Wyburn, uh, Wyburn down. John Wimburn, he's a bit of an unorthodox looking fighter, but uh, he seems to get in with his uh, kicks and his punches. This is a, he's a strange guy to uh, range him. And Wimburn in trouble, the back on the ropes there, trying to around, turns it round, and now he combinations left and right, both the fighters. Kicks to the meat section there. And the, at the end of the first round, hard one to, hard one to score. I think uh, that was very close. Uh, pretty even, I would think. Yeah, I would, I would score that yeah, fairly even. Well. His charge is uh, Nick Tolikouris, and as we mentioned before, making a comeback after two years and some serious surgery in the meantime on that knee. Yeah, that's correct. Uh, so far, so good. Um, you know, as the fight goes on, wear and tear can happen. It's just a matter of uh, um, waiting and seeing uh, what will happen. Basically, oh, Wimburn straight into it. He's attacking uh, that right leg of Talakouris. I think Wimburn got his eye on that uh, bandage there. Obviously, it is bandaged for a reason. But I suppose Wimburn. for the layman, is the theory that he'll work on the good leg and then hammer away at the bad one in due course? Yeah, that's correct. Uh, when the parent patient comes through to the front leg, there becomes a tendency to lift that leg, and uh, that's when you take the back leg. Talakoros with some heavy punching. Mutual corner. Clean break. Uh, Peter Clark asked him to step back properly. And fight on. 
Greenburn coming through with a lot of kicks at the moment. Yeah, he's a, he's a, as you said, he's a, a very unorthodox, but uh, nonetheless uh, penetrating. Unorthodox are very interesting to see. Talakuris, I think, hitting a good one on the chin there. He seems to buckle for a minute, but comes back fairly well. Yeah, he gets a short right jab into the uh, uh, base of uh, Talakuris. Now look at Talakuris. A lot of holding between the fellas. Some high kicking scene from uh, Winburn. Unaffected at the moment. This Winburn, uh, as we said earlier, has uh, come back from Asia, uh, competing in Thailand as we understand it. That's correct. And uh, was uh, involved in a... Uh, uh, Good midsection punches there yes, from Talakuros. Was involved in a decision at the Glass House here recently uh, in where he used uh, the elbows. And I think we're giving the benefit of the doubt on that occasion that it was just a relapse into uh, the Thai rules as opposed to uh, what is sanctioned here in Australia. Yeah, that's correct. I mean, a lot of times... Oh, look at this. Both fighters really having a go. This is slugging, oh, and they get saved by the belt. And I tell you what, it would be, that would have been a relief to all parties, I think. Yeah, I think it would have. Uh, they seem to tire at the end of that round. Uh, it might boil down. This fight might boil down to a matter of fitness here. Here you go. Hold that. Stop. Hold that. Stop. Don't worry about it. Stop. Don't tell me what the boy jobs. It's Wyburn. He's in the red corner. Mate, get that here. That's the belt thing. Vaseline. It looks like he's got a cut on his uh, forehead there. Oh, That'll be interesting to watch. Dr. Peter Lewis uh, having a look, and uh, this is the this is what impresses me about this: the uh, the priority for the safety of these uh, athletes. And he compares that uh, he, he compares with the referee. So all parties are uh, conversant with what in fact is going on, and I think that's uh, uh, that that is just. Fantastic to see that happen. That's correct. Go, I mean, the go. fighter has to be the number one person. They're the ones uh, out there fighting. They're the ones putting on the show for everybody. So uh, unless they're the main concern, there will be no kickboxing. Winburner, as we say, in the black trunks with the blue piping. And Telecorus in the purple trunks with the white piping. And uh, have a look at this. Telecorus went in hard there. I think Telecorus content with punching. I haven't seen many kicks from him at all. Um, Winburn, on the other hand, a kicker. So th there is a clash of style here. It's Winburn. Uh, nothing that I've seen uh, come through very clearly yet. Um, there's a few uh, good jabs from uh, both of the fighters. You will notice that... Uh, that cut on the forehead, just above the left eye of uh, Winburn. It's one that was inspected between rounds. That's right. I think uh, Talakuris will have that in his mind and work upon that. Whenever you see a weakness in the fighter, you just aim for it. That is uh, that is how a lot of fights are won. Oh, and it's not Winburn right in the trouble. Fight. Very fortunate there. He had his elbow up when that kick came through. Both fighters working inside. All the action over towards the neutral corner. And referee Peter Clark stepping in and separates them once again. Calico is uh, very good oh. in the upper body. Wimburn really working those legs. There's a little tight grapple there with the leg. And we see Calico. Oh. And it's punch for punch. Calico is trying to land on heavy ones, working the body. And it's one for one at the moment. Him back. I think the Dana corner sensing uh, an edge at the moment. I think Talakur has got to be careful. Yes, he's, uh, he's, he's just such a strange guy to fight uh, Winburn. That's right. I think we're going to see a lot more of him. You just regardless. don't know what to expect from him. And the bell again. Oh. Good round. Excellent round. So how do you see this at the moment? I think uh, Talakulis really came of age in that round. He, he scored the clearer punches. Uh, this is the, what he needed to be doing. Exactly. Uh, within the, uh, the earlier rounds, there was no uh, big difference in the points, but I think uh, Talakulis really took this round. Champ, how do you see the points? This um, I believe at the moment uh, Talakulis did it correctly, um, but there's not, not much in it at, at all. It's amazing though, isn't it? Two, two, two totally different fighters. And, uh, and to see them working on uh, 
what, uh, Winburn's legs there, and uh, that, that seems to be his strong point. Yeah, that's correct. Uh, a lot of kicking from his department. Uh, and the bit that impresses me about him is such a tall <laughs> race. He does not look like a, uh, a fighter as Talatoros does. But uh, he just comes up with the bit uh, after an answer. No. And as I say, I hope we see a, a, a lot more of both of them. John Winburn coming back yeah, after uh, the kicks again. After only uh, one fight in Australia, which we was disqualified. It's uh, after fighting uh, in Asia and Telecross kick to the uh, inside leg there. Telecross on the comeback trail after a two-year layoff. Telecross stronger in the upper body. Telecross working the midsection and then going up towards the head area. Running the one then. Oh, there's one back. Hit for tat. Left some right. Telecorus trying to unload one on him. Telecorus trying to set him up now, working him with his game. The wind burn to his credit. He just keeps fighting back. Yes, he does indeed. Kicks keep on coming. Telecorus. Oh, there's a good kick from Winburn. Kalakur is trying to work with his hands. I think uh, Winburn has to try and keep him away with those lengthy legs. He's got to keep the kicking on. Tire Kalakur. When you take control of fighters' legs, he's, uh, he's punching and everything goes, as you can see there. Kalakur is being troubled at the moment from the kick. And again. Out of the neutral corner. I think there's going to be a three count now. Yeah. Big uppercut there. Just slid through. And it's one for one at the moment. Calico is working the legs himself. It's very hard you know, after an operation to come back very strong. Which is always in the back of the fighters' hand. Oh, oh. it's, it's interesting. I've been watching that. And it's definitely Ladies and gentlemen, by split points, the winner is John Wyborn. Well, what can I say? Two exciting athletes in here, very capable, and two very, very interesting trainers. Uh, respectively, two respected referees, if it comes to that. So, a lot of, a lot of uh, backup to these two great guys who are just about to uh, go for this ISK light middleweight title. Yeah, that, that's correct. I, I think this fight's going to be full of action. Carl Westerman's been around for a while, a lot of experience. And uh, Pony Boy, Sam Solomon, uh, he's the up-and-coming fighter, and uh, he's always come up with the good, so it will be an interesting fight here. Coming up for round one, schedule six rounds. Six rounds of boxing, kickboxing as is. Six rounds, and this will be, I think, a very, very fast event in regards to action. These both very, very capable fighters. That's correct. Uh, I think it'll be on right from the first bell. Round one. Aggression in different ways. Kick from Westerman. Solomon. To the right again. Slap. Bit of holding there. Solomon there, ducking and weaving. You really got to watch Westerman's hands. He's really good in that department. I think Bryce does a, a really good job with the hands of the, his boys. Solomon there with a few nice roundhouse kicks. 
Balance, timing is what it's all about. The Water Nation, the hands, the feet, and to keep them within the rules. Fighters testing their strength out at the moment. First round of the sixth round bout for the ISKA light middleweight title. The title holder, of course, is the man in the red trunks. Another challenger. Bart Westerman, of course, uh, as the bet pointed out, very capable as a boxer. He kicks on Westerman there, just working the inside and outer leg. Uh, Solomon uh, just contend on grappling there in the corner. At the end of round number one, I saw that for some fairly even competition. Two, two different styles. Uh, interesting to hear were conversations. Both the uh, charges. What's this listen to Dave Hitchcock Jr.? Just settle down there. Just settle down. 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 Just all great sponsors of Tannic Sonics, Turkish Revenge, the Radisson Carlton Hotel. Coming over for altitude. Going over into the opposite corner. Mitchell Black and Dave Hedgecock. Mouth guards in. Four for seconds out. Round number two. And an even match so far. Yeah, that's correct. They've both started off. Uh, it was just round basically two. a test of each other's strength. And uh, I think they'll sort of turn it up a bit in this round. Nice jab from Sam straight away. Oh, flurry there. Combination left and right. Not too many of them, however, scoring uh, points. Solomon being warned uh, by referee Peter Clark for holding. Nothing more than that. Yeah, I just said. Uh, I think that. Oh, Sam with a few kicks there. I think they're both holding in. Um, Sam just happened to get caught. Yeah, that's <laughs> correct. But I mean, you've got to try it on, don't you, in some cases. Oh, a lot of aggression. Tip for tat at the moment. It's one for one. Both fighters really having a go. Solomon keeps his hands down. Uh, more to see that uh, Westerman's more the, uh, the traditional the slip there. Yeah, Westerman, the, uh, more of the conventional boxing style, whereas yes. Solomon, uh, he, uh, he's a bit unorthodox in his style, but uh, he does get in these punches and kicks. Oh, yes, we take nothing away from him. The he's pony boy. Weary. He ducks and weaves very well. Very quick to, uh, to get those hands up where they should be. Let's yeah. See again that he chooses that way, he feels comfortable with it, obviously. And I guess you've got to go that way, don't you? Well, uh, sometimes it all depends on your trainer as well. Um, the trainers have always told, told, told me, myself, and a lot of other uh, boys to keep their hands up. Um, it only takes one little knock on the chin to uh, send you to the canvas here. Pair of them. And the belt. Round two of six rounds here for this. White middleweight title at uh, the Radisson President here in Melbourne. As I said on this beautiful November night. And uh, a really, really capacity, warm crowd here this evening. Uh, getting right behind both boxes. You can't count. Bella. You've got to be first. I told you it was a front kick. A full house. I told you you should it's get it. It's a Sunday. People have got to go to work today. And they're here. They're here. It's just a real set. Is it mock up? 
Also, Isker Australian the Victorian Mike champion, Jared Curtis. Very, very and big Isker for the middleweight champion, Aaron Pitbull. They're in his paper covering the event. And of course, looking for a grab. Oh, yeah. What's happening in the, the hands of the world in the future? Like, what's going to happen the other weeks, is it? Oh, well, uh, they're always sort of chasing me up. It's but great to see they're interested. That's that's fantastic. Yeah, the Turkish community, are very, uh, very united community, and they, they do support each other. And Terrific. as you can see, I mean, this crowd is just capacity, and 80% will be Turkey. Round three of the competition. And none less aggressive than the first round. Have a look at this. Westerman taking the fight up to Solomon. Solomon nearly caught him off guard. Oh, it's kick for Tad at the moment. Oh. Both parties having a... Oh! Westerman, he caught the... I think it was a left, a left of the chin. He sent him to the correct canvas. He got up pretty quick, but uh, that could be a determining effect right now. Sam really cool, he's having a rest in the corner. Just shows you the coolness. Ah, uh, he has. Westerman comes back straight away with his own. And that's one for one. This is an oh, awesome fight. Oh, this is, you know, it's, it's an amazing fight. This is the championship. And these guys are giving their people, the, the people that money. Westerman really having a go now. Westerman got Simon on the back pedal. Simon yeah. trying to find his way out of it. They're both into the blue corner. Well, they're really having a punch on now. Oh, it's punch for punch. Oh, throwing himself in it. Westerman really went in there with uh, heavy punches after that knockdown. I don't think he liked that at all. Westerman like Graves on the nose. Solomon, the less orthodox stance. Westerman, the aggressor again. I think Sam. Placed him in the red corner. Tries to kick out of it. I think Sam's got to really kick those hands up here. I've got to tell you, Westerman is wearing one under his left eye. Just a tad of blood there. Dr. Peter Lewis will be watching this. Connects with the right. And now. In and out of that red corner. I think both the boys are talking to. Peter Clark has been working overtime here tonight. Box on. Having a word to the boys about the holding. Certainly cool them down for the moment, but it's only a moment. Amazing, <laughs> Westerman. I think Westerman the aggressor at the moment. Tony Boy just content on At the bell. Halfway mark. Well, as you said, it's a, we've had a, a number of fabulous events so far here tonight. At this event, they've got their money's worth. The rest is going to be a bonus from this point in time. That's correct, but this is the type of... You want to lose the same watch out of going. Next one holds on, taking a point off, understand? Just a comment there, Peter Clark, the referee, coming across and telling both corners, the next one that holds on, I will take the point off. So, uh, that's reasonable, and uh, he's trying to keep the fight open, I guess. That's right. Uh, there's nothing like a clean fight here. I mean, people don't, don't come to see kickboxing, you know, holding each other and doing that sort of reaction. So, Round number four has been called. As the seconds go out, this is the uh, ISKA, the International Sport Karate Association Light Middleweight Championship. The red truck, Sam Solomon, in the... Uh, in the bright coloured uh, diamondy type trunks, we've got Dale Westerman. He is, he is in fact the aggressor in this fight so far, and of course he is the challenger. Ooh, that was an excellent kick from Sam then, but uh, Dale Westerman he just keeps fighting back and back. That was a pull down from uh, Pony Boy. The ref has taken a point off. Quite unintentional, but the boys were warned. The both boys were warned, so that's really got Sam going. I guess you've got to keep it clean some way. In the neutral corner. Don't hold, don't hold, Sam. The pony boy, the aggressor, Solomon. Again, upper body strength. Solomon doing the work at the moment. He wants to get that point back. Cannot afford to drop any points in a championship event. That's correct. He said his hand's still very low though, Ian. He's really got to watch. 
He's really got to watch that back though he's fighting. High kick from Solomon. He's keeping Weston and Weary. Weston comes in with a left hook to the chin. Solomon wisely. The guys have got to watch out. They've got to watch out of the holding here. The left from Solomon there. And of course, as the fight goes on, there's the chance. Oh, yes! Left kick. A left kick to the midsection, followed with a left hook from Solomon in the red corner. That is his home corner. Four of the six round championship competition here tonight. The Renaissance president has seen some exciting action in this particular stanza. And let me tell you what I would like to be trying to score it at the moment. I really can't see the round boys at the moment. I scored the third round to That's correct. Uh, that could be the only determining factor right now. At the Renaissance Hotel, with the shots. Really very hard to separate the two. Vice Burke was all the talking there to Dale Westerman. Uh, rather grazed on the uh, top of the forehead, down underneath the left eye, the nose. On the other hand, over in the other corner, up. the red corner. Some uh, real Second serious touch. talking going on here. Oh, 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 last, oh, oh. last bit of instructions. Two rounds remaining. Who's it going to be? Will the defend, will the champion defend his title, or will it be the challenger? The bell goes. Peter Clark says box. This will be a full-on round. This is the second last round of the fight. The fighters will be trying to take an edge here. The fighters will be very wary that the fight's very close. With some big punches being thrown from both fighters. Back in the blue corner. Structures coming out. Is it's one for one. I think Westerman coming out better from that exchange. Definitely not applying for the judge's job. It's very hard, very hard at the moment. Here. Good pitches here. The action Good coming from the there. Radisson president in uh, Queens Road in Melbourne. Just opposite the site for the Grand Prix track. Nice low leg kick from uh, Westerman there. Right, 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 right. And if you notice those little kicks from Westerman, trying to, uh, it's actually a heel on the back of the leg. But there you go again. Let it be having its effect on this. Oh, oh, nice left roundhouse from Solomon. Picking up points with those kicks. Westerman holding on in that exchange. And really, yeah, this is tit for tat. It is a full on fight. And it is excellent to watch. I, I'm really taking, uh, with no disrespect, I noticed that that uh, penalty point before. This has been a great, this has been a great example of kickboxing. Yeah, that's right. Uh, uh, what a delight. I mean, two boys really having a go. and. I mean, we can't separate the boys at this stage of the fight. Definitely damage to the nose of Westerman that is bleeding. That's correct. And, uh, I think nothing major, though. Nothing major. No, well, Peter uh, Lewis will be taking a good eye on that. Oh, a couple of punches from Sam there. Solomon. Solomon, the attacker. And the bell goes. One remaining. It's going to be hot in the corners now. To go. It'll be interesting to, to hear what the corners have to say. Yes, now pick up the audio in the red corner with Dave Hitchcock Jr. Do you want to win the fight? Okay, you must want to win the fight. I'll do as I tell you. Go on the fucking kicks. That's what I'm saying. He comes off the road to your hands. It's still fucking down. Give him time. Do you want to Middleweight 
final here at the Radisson President 2. A very, very emotional crowd. Westerman is coming out. They're uh, swapping down the area, so there's uh, no uh, disadvantage to either boxer. This is the final round. This is where, this is where it makes it or breaks it for, uh, for the fighter. I believe the points could be even going into this round, so it's going to be very close. That's right. Westerman, the dark trunks, the red trunks of Solomon. The two of them lining each other up. They know this is the round that's got to be done. Get in and do it is the instructions. Work hard for it. Bryce Burt whistled told Westerman. Do you want to win the fight was the question from Dave Hedgecock Jr. Their charge is now in there. Ooh, some going. heavy punching going on. Bring up the stamina, the discipline. Peter Clark, the referee, separating him again. Back to centre ring. Kicks from both. Wind up for a spinning kick, but it didn't happen from Sam Solomon. Westerman again, working on that right, of that left leg. Oh! That was a, a slip in. Simply a slip. Ooh. Oh! A turning kick if from uh, Solomon. Oh, left hook from Solomon. Solomon now taking the box. And, and again. It up to Westerman. Westerman trying to time it off the rope. Westerman perhaps in trouble here. Peter Clark runs in, separates them. Uh, Solomon uh, scoring two left hooks to the chin of uh, Westerman there. Westerman came back, but uh, I don't think he scored any clear punches. Solomon the aggressor, I call it at this stage. Oh. That went right over the top of the head. Westerman yeah. tiring slightly. I think Westerman's or got to realise here that... More uh, tired is probably the, the correct term. They're both tired. That's right. Bleeding from the nose, Solomon now. Over in the neutral corner. Break is the call. Time ticking away. ISKA middleweight championship up here for grabs. This is the round that's going to decide it. The two fighters coming up now. And the bell. It will be a points decision. Come on. Decision. The new Iska Commonwealth light middleweight champion, Damon Dale Westerman. And Westerman's got it. Westerman's got it on split point.
the president of the International Sport Karate Association and ringside medical chief, Dr. Peter Lewis, your promoter, Tarek Solek, government aficionados, Bartlett McCarthy and Robert Todd. Showtime! This is for the International Sport Karate Association Super Middleweight Championship of the World! Would you welcome in the red corner, aiming to win back the championship he won earlier this year. He comes from Melbourne's eastern suburbs, part of the Jamal Hazan Academy, scaling 78.2 kilograms. He is a South Pacific Super Middleweight Champion. The WKA Victorian, Australian and ISCA Super Middleweight Champion. With a record of 17 bouts, 15 wins, 2 losses, 11 wins by knockout. Would you welcome the Turkish Tormentor, Gupan Ozkan. Across the ring in the blue corner, the defending champion, originally from Samoa, then New Zealand, now based Liverpool, New South Wales. He won the championship at the E.G. Whitland Centre on August 26, wearing pink trunks with black piping, with a record of 18 bouts, 15 wins, 7 by Knocker, Mark the Mighty Man. Defending world champion, Dave Hedgecock Jr. Well, this event, Stan, all took place on the 26th of May. Uh, sorry, 26th of August when uh, May won the fight. And, of course, uh, this may be a night of sweet revenge. Absolutely. I was there for that event. Uh, let me tell you, it was a magnificent fight. Probably the best fight of the year. Unfortunately for uh, Gherkin Oscan, he was dethroned. And I know tonight... I know he wants that title badly. Gherkin Oskan is going to try to regain that championship status. Round one. All the talking has been done now, Ian. Now it's time to put up. Gherkin goes straight to attack. Just misses with the uppercut. Low kicks. Nice uppercut. But come back, Mark May. These guys going toe to toe just where they left off in the last fight. That's exactly how they ended up last time, Ian. And they're continuing. Nice check, comes back, good right hand by Gherkin, this is the mark. As you can see, the skill in this particular fight in the checking, the, 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 the plain check. Enormous support for Gherkin last time here in Melbourne. Mark Samoan born, brought up in New Zealand, now he's fighting in Liverpool, New South Wales. That's how it's described. Certainly doesn't lack it when it comes to aggression. Have a look at this. Mm, Great experience between these two. Focus, keep your eyes. Oh, nice. Oh, good body and uppercut there. Typical more close combination there. No kick. No hand up front. Both fighters. Oh, good shot right hand there, bro. Oh, Mark May on the body, uppercut. Nice kick. It's blocked there by Gerson. Both fighters looking great, Trim. Have a look at the reaction of these guys. Yeah. Nice jab there by Gerkin. Punch, counter punch, kick, counter kick. Copy book stuff. On the ropes, good Khan Oskan. Countering with the right and the left, misses the mark. On the ropes now, Mark May. Okay. Oh, toe. Look at him, toe to toe. Oh. Stan, this has been a great night. Nice up the Great events this evening, and this is sort of topping it off. World Championship defense. Full House. The full House here at the Radisson in Melbourne, Australia. Gurkhan Oskan, the challenger this evening. Nice high kick oh. at the bell ring. Dave Hester. In there to remind, them, to remind the boys what's going on there. The pressure. Right. If you think he's hitting you, you please. Oh, 
¿Quién me va a jugar? No, 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 no. Grand Stem. Uy. John Stem. Si de head kick, ¿quién me va a jugar? I mean, she knows what it's all about herself. Yeah. In fact, the trainer in, uh, in the corner is Tony Renata, a former champion himself. So, good experience in the corner. Instructions have been uh, delivered, and that they come for round two. Toe to toe again. Oh. This is any tougher. Fair dinkum, but it's rough. Oh, look at it. Toe to toe, the crowds. Absolute mayhem here ringside the crack. Oh, big run here by Good Canos Gun. A round kick. Look at the smile on Mark May. A touch of arrogance. Oh, straight left. Tags. Good Canos Gun. Oh, I'm just going to come back. It's amazing. So fast. It's like these guys are not small men. Two middleweights. High kick. Blocked by Mark May. On the ropes. Good Canos Gun. Try the low kick. Mark May. Uppercut. Gurkhan Oskar in the black and silver stripes. Mark May, the champion tonight, defending his title for the first time in the pink trunks of black piping. Target is poised around the, the ring here. Gurkhan Oskar bleeding from the nose. Straight left, Gurkhan Oskar. Have another go. go. Blood trickling out of the nose of Gurkhan Oskar and the challenger. Right back with the left is uh, Mark May. Mark May, a little more composed at this point here, if you want to win. A little more composed. Gurkhan, uh, Mark May, cut the wrong there at this point. Nobody giving an inch. Aggression on both parts. Punch, counter punch. Have a look at this. Mixing. Oh, left and right man. Gurkhan. Gurkhan oh, yes. again. And again. And again. Oh, yes. He's hit him! He's hurt! He's on the race, Mark May rally! Good to ask him, I'm stuck! Mark May to the spare brother! Big package by both fighters! The bell down! What a round! What a round! Crowd going absolutely wild! Absolutely wild! Oh. Can you believe a man could stand there and take that punishment? Overconfidence, a bad enemy of the fight. Was there perhaps a little overconfidence in respect to Mark May there towards the end? That's Mark May style fighting. The ring outside the ring is a beautiful, humble guy. Yeah. In the ring, it's a, it's a, a mental warfare. You see, that's what's all about him. He's showing Gurkhan he's no problem. So we'll see if he can come back, Mark May. Well, let's see if uh, Gurkhan Oscar can continue off from a great uh, rally in the end of the second round there. Be a morale booster for him that last round to uh, to what he's all about tonight, and he wants this back bad, Oscar. A lot of preparation by both fighters to come oh, in tonight. They're in incredible shape. Look at the physiques on both these guys. Oh, punches and kicks by Gurkhan Oskan. Oh, the time. Low kick. Gurkhan Oskan. Really, it's all offensive here. It's all attacking. <laughs> Not much defense happening here. Both hoping to land the big jackpot blow, the big one on the money. Big punches there missing. Again, if you look at Mark May, he looks a little more composed. If it's fair to say that in. And again on the ropes. This is where he got the trouble. The other side of the ring. May's taken a couple of real beauties from uh, Kirk and Oskin. Oskin, the big punch. There he goes again. May, try to answer.
And now May lands one. And May now in trouble. Looks like he's left high, perhaps. We're in the blue corner. Oh, there's a nasty cat on the champ. The champ's bleeding in the left eye. Time out. Might, might have been a head clash. It looks to me like a head clash. I'm not sure. I'm not sure whether it was a, a, a kick or a, or a punch or a head clash. Watching Dave Hedgecock talking with Dr. Peter Lewis. Well, and well. remembering that, the, that it's all about what is best for these athletes. Absolutely, but as a decision for a world title fight, it was a head clash we going to the scorecard. Okay, so. The fight continues. Referee and Dr. Peter Lewis. Now we have this weakness, and Hoskin will know it. It's a nasty cut there on the left eye of the champ. Durkan Oskan rallying. He wants to continue on. He wants to put the pressure and be aggressive. In the neutral corner, good left hook there landed by the champ. But comes right back to challenge at Gurkan. Bleeding again now, the champ. Oh! Oh! Look at the blows! Big blows by both fighters. Got to tell you, if one hit me, I'd be in the middle of Albert Park Lake. Big round there for the challenger. Okay, and claiming that round. Let me tell you, my biggest concern at this point for the challenger, I feel that he's not composed enough. If you look at the champ, although he might have lost a couple of rounds there, he's a lot more composed. We're in the corner there. Here we go, here we go, here we go. Working on that cut there, right here. What did they do for the We've got a journey in. We've got some people that we can use. They're allowed to use their national board. And it prevents the bleeding. So they'll be hoping that they stop the bleeding. Because if he continues to sleep, the push is down the eye. Then it's like a problem in the fight. It's back to your vision. It's below the eyebrow. It's below the eyebrow. It's below the eyebrow. And of course, unfortunately, I'm not trying to be negative in this situation, but it's a lead at the end of some of the careers. It's just a fight at the end of the day. It's a fight at the end of the day. It's a fight at the end of the day. It's a fight at the end of the day. Anyway, here we go. Round four, is it? At this point, the point I was trying to make in that I want to see Gherkin compose a little more. Otherwise, he's going to tire out in the later rounds. Mark my words on that. Expert commentary from Stan Longanides and uh, just asking time out again. I think despite the champ giving away maybe the last couple of rounds, he's still composed and looks pretty fresh to me. I'm just concerned that in the later rounds, Gherkin Oskin will wear and tear. Let's hope I'm right for the Melbourne fans. A right roundhouse kick there landed on the gloves of the champ. Mark May, big responsibility here tonight. Important fight in for both fighters to start getting some international recognition, and this is a very important fight for them. Mark May, oh yes. Oscar. Standing there, sizing it up. Over towards the referee's corner. May still managing a smile. As you can see, Mark May, uh, he's got a little cut on the left eye and also the left cheekbone starting to swell up a little bit. But I don't think at this point there's anything... Uh... Oh, big oh, right yeah. hand! But right back comes the champ. These are two champions you're looking at here, Ian. Ian. Two champions. Nice high kick there by Gherkin, a front kick, comes right back with punches. Mark May back on top though, look at Mark May, that's a sign of a true champion though. And what we've got to add to the equation is the heat in which they're fighting under here tonight, those hot arc lights. The conditions absolutely it is very, very warm, warm here. Good right hand coming back there by the challenger. Oh, good kick by the champ. Gherkin says, yeah, no problem, let's do it. Toe to toe they go again. High kick by the challenger, the champion, sorry. Gherkin, probably showing a little fatigue at this point. Unnecessary high kicks there, Ian. Losing a lot of energy. Big wild left hook. Finds the mark there by the challenger. It was interesting to note earlier, when you said even uh, as the rounds go down, just getting yourself up off the canvas if you happen to slip, yeah. takes unnecessary energy away. At the bell. bell. Gentlemen, gentlemen, thank you. I tell you what, I'll tell you something. The champion right now, I think he's in a spot of bother. 
that left eye is starting to swell up. The mouse is starting to develop, and it couldn't even find. We're waiting to find that the next couple of rounds might close up entirely. Jamal Hassan, you can hear in the background there, speaking to Gherkin. He spoke to him before the night's fight. There's the, uh, there's the eye, the nasty cut. As you can see, the mouse underneath the eye as well. I'm bending you in the next couple of rounds. That gets played once or twice more. That eye is going to start closing. So he should stop. He should really keep that left arm back and protect that. And that's one of the distractions I'm sure that he's trying to do. If you've been in that predicament, is, is, is it, you've got to change the old style. You no, you can't let, see, the other fight is, um, you can't let the game play change. Even though you've got to keep it short, you've got to be uh, aware of it. And you've got to protect it as much as you can. But you can't change the game play. There we go, round five. This is round five, scheduled for Ian. Seven rounds, I understand. It's, we'll watch the fight tonight here in Melbourne at the Radisson. A long journey. Wild punches there by Goodkin. Not really finding the mark clearly, but probably looking effective. A front kick. Oh, misses with those big punches. They're the sort of punches that I'm talking about, Ian. When you miss, they take a lot out of you. Mark May throwing a. A jab with nothing really behind it, just keeping him busy. Mark May in the pink shorts, the champion, a southpaw, big left hand. Straight am, I not, left. am I not mistaken? Is Kirk a little swollen in the right eye? That's right, he's got a little cut on the eye. On the eye. It's not really bleeding, but it might start to develop and bruise. A bit of blood from the nose from Gurk and Oscar, the Turkish cha challenger here tonight. These two great athletes, they'll know they've been in the fight tomorrow. Oh, right, they'll be sore tomorrow. Oh, it's a knockdown! The champs hit the deck! Three. The champs hit the deck! Gurkin Oskan, this is his chance! He takes the full count! Gurkin Oskan's gonna wanna jump on top of him! He does! He comes all over him in the neutral corner, right above us here! Big kick just misses the mark! Rallying again! Gurkin Oskan, head, body, uppercuts, hooks, he's throwing everything! Big right hook there landed again by the challenger. Oscar looking the stronger at the moment. But the champion's still composed. Here's a true champion, this young man. Mark May from New South Wales. He's fighting, defending his crown tonight here at the Radisson. Gherkin lines him up with the right and left the misses. Toe to toe, they go again. Here we are in the neutral corner, right above us in. Toe to toe. There's no and kicking, breaks it's boxing at the moment. Break. Warning for Holly, and the round. Big oh. win for the challenger. Oh. oh, look, if the people aren't having a good time, they don't know what a good time is in this sport. Huge round for the challenger. The local boy, good can ask him. The challenger may be sensing victory here. Big lenses coming out on the cameras, concerned for the corners. Absolutely. There we go, ringside. We're in the blue corner here with a champ. A spot of bother here, as I told you earlier, bleeding from the left eye with a nasty cut just down underneath, underneath the eyebrow or above the eyelash perhaps. A nasty bruise, as you can see, under the eye, which might, might start swelling up. But Take a turn now, if we go through the red corner, we've got big problems there as Take well. Turn, You'll see the wear and tear on Gurkhi and Oscar right there. The time is Not necessarily on this angle here, but on the other side, that profile is in the middle of the We're ringing the fight all the way. Absolute mayhem here at the ringside. Round number six has been called. Seconds out. The fans sitting on the edge of their seats. Anybody's fight at this stage for this title here tonight There's at the Radisson President in Melbourne. What a great venue for kickboxing here at the Radisson. It is wonderful atmosphere. A sellout crowd. And they're getting their money's worth. Some great fights here tonight. And this is capping it right off the championship. What a build up for this main event for the Super Middleweight Championship of the World. The challenger, Gurkhan Oskan, on the left of your screen with the black and silver stripes. The champion in the pink with black piping, Mark May from New South Wales. And once again, they're toe to toe in the middle of the ropes. Gurkhan Oskan loads up and misses. Instructions coming from uh, Mark May's corner in the last break was take the fight up to him. In the corner, the challenger comes back with the right hand. But the champion covers up well. He's got good defense, his champion. Every full. It's good to see that both fighters respect each other. You know, yes, they acknowledge that, each other. That, There's no that, cheap shots here. 
Both fighters respect each other. They're good champions. Good right hand and left hook. Right hand again. The crowd on his feet. Can the challenger come up with something? But the champ's right there. Big right hand. Half catches the glove. Double jab by the challenger. But Mark May's right there. He's a true champion. Just misses with the right with the left round kick. Bit of mental warfare going on in the ring here. Gurkha landed another right. Oh, that. big kick. <laughs> yes. Anything you can do, I can do better. Is that the deal? Oh, this is toe to toe stuff. Have a look at him. Athlete. Big left hook. I don't know if it's a knockdown. The referee will not call it a knockdown. It's a slip. It's a slip. Mark May Final. went straight up to the challenger. Combinations by the challenger. They're landing. But they're not hurting the champ at this point. Big left hook. At this point in, I think Gherkin has the ball. Coming. And another round. I think that was another good round for the challenger. The crowd on its feet. And interestingly enough, as I said before, the instructions coming out of the blue corner prior to that for Mark May would have take the fight up to the challenger. And he didn't appear to be able to do that in that round. That's right. And you know what? Both these How fighters, they're starting to fight. They're both the fighters. So the the person you can't hands up. You can't go it. You can't go it. We're in the blue corner here. We haven't heard an audio problem in the blue corner, but we can see what's happening right there. His trainers are a little concerned. The trainer in the middle there of the screen. I, I don't recall his name, but his boxing trainer. Tony Renato above worse than his coach. And Tony Renato, of course, a well well classified and could be a good fighter. Absolutely. Final okay. round. The audio and the audio been... is coming up there, thank you, you gentlemen. And uh, we just received a little bit, speaking very quietly in the blue corner, uh, a little less uh, flamboyant in their message, but nevertheless as strong. Ian's no, the not final the, round. Not the final round. I don't think they didn't touch gloves. I'm sorry. No. I... It's not the final round. Right? No. Okay, well, round six. Excuse then. us for that one. We're getting that excited. The crowd. I'm in awe over here. Yeah. I can't believe this crowd. Absolute jam-packed house. Even the Crown Casino is interested. They're here watching the show. Yeah, brilliant. Big combination there by the challenger. The champ's on the ropes. Come back with an inside leg kick. The challenger's not happy. Point. Point. Oh, they're going wild. Okay. The challenger wants this one. Confident. He screams out, he jabs and scores with a jab. The Bolo right hand left hook, right hand. Mark May. He's working on the jab. The jab's in trouble. What a fight. What a fight, Ian. Fight on. Both guys just looking at each other. It looks like it's the 15th round in Rocky Five. Both these guys, well and tear. But really, the challenge is scoring more than the champ at this point. Point after point at the moment. Mark May's going to take that fight up to uh, Kirk and Osgood. Ooh, misses the left hook, but comes back with a counter kick there by the champ. What a fight we have here tonight. Left hook, uppercut. Oh, he's throwing everything, the cha challenger. Toe to toe, throwing wild punches, both guys, but no one really effective on those encounters. Again, on the ropes, the challenger, both throwing leather. A front kick by the champ. Very little kicking. Ah. Very little kicking. Ah. Ah.
a gutsy fighter. Job will see a rematch, and Mark Bray takes the belt over. What a gesture! 